Alrighty, Mr. Thompson here with a video math lesson. Continuing on with probability and uh, looking at combining events. And uh, in order to understand that stuff, we're going to look at some different notation that we can use and look at how to draw things up in Venn diagrams and how to make use of Venn diagrams. So lots of terminology, terminology and um, notation, lots of notes to take on that stuff, some drawings to make. And um, so we'll do some examples. We'll also look at something called the addition rule, which has to do with a lot of this stuff and an example of that. So strap in. Here we go. First of all, let's just get uh, Venn diagram sorted. Uh, you're probably familiar with them or you may be. Uh, typically, we just use some circles or we could even just have one circle. Um, and the circle and the things inside the circle represent um, certain events. So this is uh, event A. We haven't defined what that is yet, but we could do that. Um, and then the other thing we do is we put a rectangle around the outside and that represents the sample space. So all the various outcomes that could happen in uh, an experiment or a situation or whatever. Okay. Um, so for example, we might have a sample space of all the odd numbers less than 10. So imagine you are going to pick something out of a hat and the numbers you put in the hat are one, three, five, seven, nine, right? Your, uh, your odd numbers less than 10. And um, maybe you're interested in uh, pulling out a prime number. So the, the event A could be prime numbers less than 10, right? Odd prime numbers less than 10, right? So we can put that into our uh, uh, Venn diagram. We've got one, three, five, seven, nine. The three, the five, and the seven are, of course, primes, and the one and the nine are not one just doesn't count as a prime and nine is uh, divisible by three okay now I've listed the um, outcomes in like inside the Venn diagram you can do that but what you most commonly see what you see more often is the number of outcomes okay so instead of the one and the nine we might have a two and instead of the three five and seven we might have the number three representing that there are three outcomes in event A and there are two outcomes out here that are part of the sample space but are not in A. Okay, so um, as I've uh, mentioned before, that we represent these numbers with n and then brackets. So the number in the sample space is five because these three uh, are in the sample space. They're within the rectangle, right? Um, as well as the two, so that's five. And the number in the event A is three, right? Um, okay. Now there is, there can be a set with zero. Uh, outcomes in it could be an event or a sample space even with zero outcomes in it you might have an event such as uh, even prime numbers greater than two right what are the chances of, find, of pulling out one of them well zero because there are zero uh, uh, outcomes in that event right there are no prime numbers uh, even prime numbers greater than two so we could say the number in B is zero or we can say it's equal to this um, zero with a slash through it which represents that empty set we can even just say b equals the empty set um, because there are no uh, elements in it no outcomes in it um, and that zero with the slash through it just makes it all that much more definitive okay more terminology and notation so this is a couple of big ones on this page the union uh, in a minute we'll see the intersection okay so unions are all the elements that are in either or any of the sets that we're um, interested in, we're talking about, right? Represented with a big U, which is nice and easy, U for union, okay? Uh, it's often drawn almost bold and big, okay? Um, but basically a big, nice big U represents a union, so you might say A union B, or the union of A and B, okay? We can draw that with um, our Venn diagrams, and we can have our two circles, one for A, one for B, and um, the union would be anything that's in A, or anything that's in B, okay? Anything that's in one or the other or both. Those are all part of the union, okay? So it's like in A or B, okay? Or both, like I said. And here I've kind of outlined it in red. Um, everything in that little space is in the union of A and B, okay? Now, intersections are um, a little bit different. Uh, the things, the intersection is things that are in both A and B simultaneously or in all the sets simultaneously. You could have more than two, okay? They are represented not by an I, which, you know, you might think makes sense, but they're the op they're kind of, they have these symbols that are supposed to be sort of opposites, union and intersection. So it's like an upside down U or like a big uh, 
funky curvy N or something like that, but it's this upside down U is the, I think the easiest way to describe it. It's like the union symbol uh, turned upside down. And so we might say the intersection of A and B, and what that would look like is the two circles overlapping, and the only parts, the only things that are in the intersection are that overlapping um, section that includes A and B, right? Um, so that is the intersection uh, in, that, in that little overlapping zone right there, okay? Um, these are things that are in set A and simultaneously in set B, all right? Uh, still more terminology and notation, um, talking about complements. So complement, uh, we've defined uh, the complement of A is anything that's not in A. Um, we can draw that, we can sort of uh, represent that with a Venn diagram as well. So if we're talking about A, then the complement of A would be everything inside the sample space, but not in the event A. Okay, and there's, uh, a, a this is our, from our first example of the odds and the primes. So the complement uh, of A, there's two in that complement, and it's, you know, everything outside the circle. Disjoint or mutually exclusive sets. These are sets with no elements in common. We could draw this as a Venn diagram with two totally separate circles, not overlapping at all. Um, we could also say that the intersection of sets like that would be empty. Okay, the intersection, there's no overlapping space, so there's nothing that's in both A and B. Um, mutually exclusive or also known as disjoint sets. All right, finally, let's look at an example. Not finally for the video, but um, we've finally arrived at this point. Um, and so we're looking at an example with 50 students. So somebody went and did a survey. Okay, they want to know about people's uh, entertainment habits and they're interested in movies and sports. So they said, did you watch any movies? Did you attend any sports events? And we get some various results. Some people did both, some people did one or the other, and some people did neither, okay? So um, we've got a total of 50 students. So right off the bat, we know our sample space number, okay? We know that the sample space is gonna be 50. The total, all the numbers in this uh, green box eventually need to add up to 50. Um, we're not gonna write the number, I, I wrote the number 50 there, but I'm gonna get rid of it because that's not going to be the number that's outside the Venn diagrams and stuff. Um, the number that's outside the Venn diagrams is whatever makes it add to 50 in the end, right? So that's important. So let's read through this. So 35 respondents said they watched a movie or went to a sports event or both, right? Um, a total of 22 had gone to a sports event and 12 of those also watched a movie. Uh, and there's a few questions they want us to answer. How many watched a movie but did not attend a sports event? And how many did neither? So neither of those questions can be answered directly from the information in the question. We need to um, do a bit of analysis. So first I'm going to define the sets, okay? Set A is going to be, or event A is going to be people who watched a movie. And event B is going to be people who went to a sports event, all right? Um, so this says 35 did one or both, okay? That is our union. So the union of A and B is 35. So that means when we draw our um, two circles, the numbers, there's gonna, be, there's gonna be a number over here of just A, there's gonna be a number over here of just B, and there's gonna be the, the ones who did both. Those are gonna all add to 35. That means if we do 50 take away 35, which is 15, that tells us that outside those circles is 15, right? Um, so the people who did neither. So that's one the answer to one of our questions, which we'll right up here in just a little bit, okay? But um, it also says total of 22 had gone to a sports event, so that's our orange circle, right? Our um, event B. And out of that, 12 also watched a movie. That is our intersection. So the people who did one and did the other, okay? So our intersection, the intersection of A and B is 12, and we know exactly where that goes. It goes right smack in the middle of our Venn diagram, right? Now remember, 22, had um, gone to a sports event total, and we've already accounted for the 12 who also watched a movie. So out of the 22, there's a total of 22 in this, in this orange circle. Uh, we've already accounted for 12. That means there's 10 left who uh, watched a movie but didn't go, oh no, sorry, went to a sports event but didn't go to a movie. Now, you may notice we've answered both of our, uh, oh no, we haven't, sorry. It's how many watched a movie. Getting ahead of myself. Um, now. These numbers need to add to 35, right? The numbers inside the uh, A and the B and the intersection. So, so far we've got 22. 
and to get up to 35 we need a further 13 so that's what goes in the the A but not B um, uh, area over here we should be able to add all these together and get 50 and just double check everything make sure everything sorts out so we can now answer our questions right we can see that we have 13 students who watched a movie but did not attend a sports event so we can write that up uh, and of course uh, for a problem like this we want to write the uh, answer as a uh, in full sentences so 13 students watched a movie but did not attend a sports event and then um, of course we know how many attended neither well that's our, our 15 um, out here so we can say 15 students um, did neither right activity or whatever did not watch a movie did not also did not watch uh, a sports event right okay that's our first example next thing uh, that we need to cover here is the addition rule all right addition rule is uh, specifically concerned with the union and f uh, d calculating the union the number in the union as well as the probability of something in the union of two events happening Okay, so if we have a union, the union is, you know, anything in all three of these, um, these spaces, right? It could be just A, it could be both A and B, or it could be just B, right? So it's like, but, but the only thing it doesn't, you know, want is the stuff that's in neither A and B, okay? So the number in that union is going to be the number in A, right, um, which includes everything in A, and then plus the number in B, but you'll notice when we add up the B, if we do the number in A and the number of outcomes in B, we've actually added the intersection twice, right? We had that number of things that were in A. And if we add the number in A plus the number in B, um, that includes that intersection each time. So we need to subtract that off um, when we, um, in order to find that total of things that are in the union of A and B. It's like A or B or both, right? We have to, we can do the number in A plus the number in B and subtract that intersection to get the, the total number in those things, right? So these will be, that, that union will be equal, equal to this expression here, number in A plus number in B minus the number in the intersection of A and B. Now, we can divide those things by the number in the sample space. So if we divide the number in the union by the sample space, then that gives us the probability of something in the union happening. And we can do that across the whole board. The number in A divided by the uh, number in the sample space is the probability of something in A happening. And likewise, um, throughout this whole thing, we divide by the number in the sample space, it gives us the probabilities of those things. And this is um, the, the definition of what we call that addition rule. So to find the probability of something happening um, in, the, in the union, we can find the number in A, the number in B, or the probability in A, the probability of something happening in B, and subtract off the probability of something happening in the intersection. This might seem like a lot of work, um, but if we look at an example, I think you might see um, why and how this can be useful. All right, so um, here's an example and we're drawing a card from a standard uh, playing deck of playing cards um, and we want to know what are the chances that it will be a queen or a heart right so if you pull a queen you're happy if you pull a heart you're happy if you pull the queen of hearts yeah totally that's both so it, it works as well um, so this is the union of queens and hearts right um, so we want to find the probability of either queens or hearts of the union of queens and hearts. So I've represented that, that with Q and H. Using the addition rule, we can add together the probabilities of getting just a queen or just a heart uh, and subtract off the, the chances of getting a queen and a heart. And that will give us uh, the probability that we want the, of that union, okay? So the number in the sample, spa sample space is uh, 52. So standard deck of cards, not counting the jokers. Uh, is 52 cards, okay? The number of queens is four. There's the queen of hearts, queen of spades, clubs, and diamonds, right? There's the four queens. And the number of hearts is 13, right? There's four suits, so 52 divided by four is 13. Um, and this is pretty much all the information we need to know, except, as well, the intersection. There is one queen of hearts, right? So the number 
of queens that are also hearts is one. Okay, this is all the information we need to do these calculations, right? So the probability of getting a queen is four out of 52, right? There's four queens out of the 52 cards, uh, and then getting a heart's 13 out of 52. The uh, probability of the intersection is one out of 52, right? We can add all these together. So four plus 13 minus one is 16. And uh, 16 out of 52 is about 31%, okay? Now, um, if this is pretty much the way to do it. There's, there's almost no easier way to find the probability of these unions. Any other simpler maths you do in your head is equivalent to the maths that we're doing here. Um, and uh, so oftentimes this method is the simplest and quickest way to do it. So, hope that helps. Set notation, uh, you know, give your uh, hand a break if you've been taking notes this whole time. Well done, and I will see you next time.